Let's look at some examples where we can practice our ba basic set operations, union, intersection, and complement. Here we're being asked to find the intersection of sets A and C, and we're given three sets, but we're only asked about A and C right now. Remember the intersection consists of the set of elements that are in both sets. So if I'm looking at A and C and looking for the intersection, I need to find the elements that are in both A and C, and in this particular case, I'm not dealing with B at all. Looking for both, I see that there's an A in both, so A goes into the intersection. There's an F in both, that goes into the intersection. There's a J in both, so that goes into the intersection. So the intersection of sets A and C is the set consisting of the elements A, F, and J. Now I want to find A union C. The union of two sets consists of the elements that are in both or either. So this time, again, I'm only dealing with A and C. I don't care about B right now. Everything from A goes in. Everything from C goes in. And the only thing I have to do now is, is eliminate duplicates. We don't list the same element twice in a set. So I just get rid of the duplications, and I end up with A union C is the set consisting of the elements A, B, F, H, I, J, D, and G. It's not necessary to put these things in any particular order, but some people like to see them in alphabetical order, so I'll alphabetize those. It's not strictly necessary. Now let's find a more complicated set operation. I want to take the union of A and C, and then when I get that result, I want to take the intersection of that with the set B. The parentheses sort of guide your order of operations here. I want to work inside the parentheses first. I want to find A union C. Lucky for us, we just found that in the previous part of this problem. So all I need to do is pop that in. So I take the set that I just found out was the union of those two sets and pop that in. And I want to intersect that with the set B. The set B, going back to the beginning, is a set consisting of A, C, D, H, and J. So I want to intersect these two sets. This is the union of A and C that I did earlier, and this is the set B that was given in the very beginning. And remember, the intersection are the overlapping elements. So there's an A in both that goes into the intersection. There's also a D in both. There's also an H in both. And there's a J in both. So when I finish the result of the whole thing, the intersection of the union of A and C with the set B is the set consisting of the elements A, D, H, and J. Just a matter of practice, basic operations. Let's do another one. What if I ask you to find a complement? Remember, you have to know the universal set in order to find the complement of a set, and we do. The universal set for our problem is a set containing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. The complement of set A consists of the elements that aren't in A but are in the universal set. So I look up at the universal set and then I eliminate the elements of the universal set. Remember, this is the universal set. I just popped it in here temporarily. But I want to eliminate anything that's in A. A complement is the universal set with anything that was in A taken out. So I look back through there, and there's an A and a B and an F and an H and an I and a J and A. Those have to be eliminated. So the complement of A is the set of things in the universal set that aren't in A. C, D, E, G, and K are the only elements in the universal set that are not in the set A, so they go into the complement. How about this? If I intersect the set A with the complement of A, if you understand what complement means, you'll know the answer immediately. The complement of A consists of the elements that are not in A. That means they don't have any elements in common. So when you intersect a set 
with another set where they don't have any elements in common, you're going to get the empty set. You could actually write out A and write out A complement and you would see that they have no elements in common. You could also write the circle with the slash through it. Both of these are notations for empty sets, so it's your choice of which you want to use. Now let's take A union A complement. This time we're taking the union of two sets. So if you union together a set with everything that's not in it, you're going to get the universal set. That is the universal set. You can actually write it out. If you take A and dump, dump all those elements in, and if you take A complement, which we calculated a minute ago, and dump that in, and then eliminate duplicates, you're going to get the universal set. In fact, there aren't any duplicates to eliminate. So anytime you take the union of a set and its complement, you're always going to get the universal set. And anytime you intersect a set with its complement, you're always going to get the empty set. And that's true in general. It doesn't matter what the particular sets are. Now let's continue with this exercise. We're given a universal set consisting of the objects hammer, moon, radio, muffin, cookie, chair, apple, fish, bread, and grape. We're given two subsets of the universal set. The set M consists of the objects from the universal set that are human-made, and the set E consists of the objects from the universal set that are edible. They're asking us to find the intersection of M with E complement. Remember, the intersection are the overlapping elements. We're looking for the items that are in both M and E complement. The set M, as I said, are the set of human-made objects from the universal set. The set E complement are the set of things that, since it's a complement, that are not edible. E are edible items, so E complement are items that are not edible. We're looking for the human-made items that are not edible. So what I would do is I'd take the universal set and I would classify them one at a time. If you go through and look, hammers are man-made, the moon is not. Radios are man-made, muffins are man-made, cookies and chairs are man-made, apples and fish are not. Bread is man-made, grapes are not. Then I'd go through and look at the ones that aren't edible. A hammer is not edible, the moon's not edible, a radio is not edible, and a chair is not edible. The others are. So I'm looking now for the things in the universal set that are human-made but are not edible. There they are. Hammer, radio, and chair are all human-made or man-made but they're not edible. So that is the intersection of those two sets, hammer, radio, chair.